Here we have a graph of the function x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 1. Down here we have a graph of the derivative of this function, f prime of x. We differentiate this function, we get 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. This function is a quadratic function. This graph here gives us the slopes of tangents to the graph of f of x. So for example, at x equals 1, we see that f prime of x is 0. And at x equals 1 on this graph here, we see that the slope of the tangent to the graph is 0. The tangent to the graph is a horizontal line, its slope is 0. Similarly, at x equals 3 in this graph, we see that f prime of 3 is 0 which means that the slope of the tangent to the graph of f of x at x equals 3 must be 0. So we have a horizontal line at x equals 3. At, say, x equals 2.5, we have this value here, which is minus 2. f prime of 2.5 is minus 2. That means that at x equals 2.5 on this graph, the slope of the tangent to this graph is, is minus 2. So the slope of this tangent here is minus 2. Now, suppose we consider the derivative of f prime of x. The derivative of f prime of x is written f double prime of x. We differentiate this function with respect to x, we get 6x minus 12. 6x minus 12 is a linear function, which means that its graph is a straight line. Linear means that x, we have x to the power of 1, is the highest power of x. Notice that when x equals 2, we have a turning point of f prime of x, which means that the tangent is a horizontal line. The slope of a horizontal line is 0. So the slope of a tangent to this graph is the derivative of f prime of x, which is f double prime of x. We evaluate f double prime at 2, and we get 0. So if we draw a graph of f double prime of x against x, we know that when x is 2, f double prime of x will be 0. We see that for values of x greater than 2, f double prime of x will be positive. So what does that mean here? Well, it means if we take any value of x greater than 2 here and look at the slope of this graph, that slope will be positive. So for example, if we take x equals 2.5 and, and get the slope of the tangent to this graph, we will get a positive result. The slope of this line has a positive slope. If we want to find out what the slope of this ta the tangent to this graph is at x equals 2.5, we can go to 2.5 on this graph here and just go up to the graph and read off the value, or just plug 2.5 in here. So we can see that for x greater than 2, this function is increasing. If you imagine walking from x equals 2 to plus infinity, you will see the curve rising. Now from the last video, we know that for the part of the function that is increasing, the derivative of that part is positive. So we get the derivative of f prime of x, which is f double prime of x. We know that that is greater than 0 for the values of x for which f prime of x is increasing. So f double prime of x is greater than 0 when x is greater than 2. Let's consider values of x that are less than 2. Well, if we're moving from minus infinity up to plus 2, we can see that the curve is f prime of x is going down. f prime of x is decreasing for values of x that are less than 2. And from the last video, we saw that when that is the case, then the derivative of this for those values of x for x less than 2 will be less than 0. In other words, f double prime of x will be less than 0 whenever x is less than 2. So for example, say we took x equals 1.5, or 3 over 2. If we want to find the, the second derivative of x at 3 over 2, we just have to, we have to get the slope of this line here, 
and you can see that it has a negative slope. Or if we go down here, we go to x equals 3 over 2 here, and go down to the graph, we can actually read off what f double prime of 3 over 2 is. We, see, we will see that it's negative. Lines going in this direction have negative slope. Now let's look back at the original function f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 1. We saw that when x is less than 2, then the second derivative is less than 0. So I've highlighted the part of the curve for which the second derivative is less than 0. That's the part in blue. And that happens when x is less than 2. And I've highlighted the part of the curve for which the second derivative is greater than 0. That's the part of the curve for all values of x that are greater than 2. Now we can see that there is a value of x which is a transition point for the second derivative. We can see that um, the second derivative of f at 2 is actually equal to 0. We see it's less than 0 for values of x which are less than 2, and it's greater than 0 for values of x that are greater than 2. So there's a jump here at 0. At, sorry, at x equals 2. And, you know, if we go to the graph of the second derivative, you can see it here. The second derivative of x at 2 is 0. This point where the second derivative is 0 is known as a point of inflection of f of x. It's a point for which the curve goes from being concave downwards to being concave upwards. Or if you imagine the curve as some sort of a vessel for holding water, you could say um, the point of inflection is the point for which the curve goes from losing water to holding water. So you can imagine pouring water into this section here. In this section here of the curve, um, the curve holds water, but it does not hold water for the section where x is less than 2. So to find the point of inflection of any function, if it has a point of inflection, we need to solve this equation, f double prime of x equals 0. For this particular function, the solution is x equals 2. We can think of f double prime of x as being the rate at which the slope of f of x is changing with respect to x. Not the rate at which f of x is changing with respect to x, but the rate at which the slope of f of x is changing with respect to x. So here we have part of the graph of f of x, that's this graph up here, and we can see the slope of the graph the slope of f of x at x, well that's just dy dx, or f prime of x, um, just two different notations for the same thing, that's the slope of this tangent here, at x. We are interested in seeing how the slope changes if we change x by a tiny amount. We change x by dx. So we have another tangent to the curve at x plus dx. We will be interested in the change in the slopes. That's the change in dy dx. d stands for the change, or the difference in the slopes of the curve between um, at this point and at this point. Let's just put some numbers to the slope of f of x at x and at x plus dx, where dx is a very small um, increase in x here. Let's suppose that the slope at x, that is dy dx, is 1.23. It's going to be positive. We know that. We can see that the curve is increasing here. We're increasing x. You can see the tangents are lines in this direction. The positive slopes so is going to be some positive number. Let's suppose it's 1.23. Let's suppose the slope of the function at a nearby point is 1.22. These slopes are practically the same. We can see that the slope at this point is actually less than the slope at this point here. So what's happening here is that the tangents are leveling off as x approaches 1. So we have tangents here leveling off until we get to x equals 1, where the tangent is horizontal. So the slopes are decreasing. 
As a matter of fact, the slopes of the tangents to f of x are decreasing for all values of x up to x equals 2. And we can see it from this graph here. This graph here is the graph of f prime of x, which is the slope of tangents to f of x. We can see that as x goes from minus infinity to plus 2, it's, we, see we, um, we see that f prime of x is decreasing. The slopes of the tangents are decreasing. So that's what we expect to get here. Um, we expect to see that tangents to the curve for higher values of x are sm get, keep getting smaller in slope. So the difference in the slope, d for difference, is this value here minus this value here. It will come out to be negative. That's the difference in the slope, and we want the change in the slope with respect to x, so we divide this by dx. So we would be dividing this by dx. This is not a very rigorous way of explaining it, but it's just to give you the idea of some of the notation. We want the rate of change of dy dx with respect to x, and the notation for this is d2y dx2. So here is an alternative notation for f double prime of x. We can also see another important point for the local maximum of f of x. We can see that the second derivative is less than zero. We can see that the slopes of the tangents are decreasing for values of x in the neighborhood of x equals 1. So as x increases from a value that's slightly less than 1, to a value that's slightly greater than 1, we can see that f prime of x is decreasing. The slopes of the tangents are decreasing, which means that the second derivative of f with respect to x is negative at a local maximum. We can also see that for a local minimum, the second derivative of f with respect to x is greater than 0. So if we take a value of x that's close to 3 but less than 3, and as we increase from that value to a value of x that's slightly greater than 3, what's happening with f prime of x is that it's increasing. It's negative for value of x that's slightly less than 3. It's equal to 0 when x is equal to 3. And then it increases to some positive value for a value of x slightly greater than 3. So f prime of x is increasing as we go f um, from, say, a small value our value close to 3 like 2.9 to a value greater than 3 like 3.1 f prime of x is increasing which means that the derivative of f prime of x with respect to 0 or, or with respect to x or f double prime of x is positive at a local minimum so these are two important points when you want to check to see if your turning points are maxima or minima it should also be noted that for a cubic function that has turning points, the point of inflection is the midpoint of the turning points. Not all cubic functions have turning points. This particular one does have turning points. So we just need to get the midpoint of 1, 3 and 3 minus 1 in order to get the point of inflection, which is 2, 1. As a matter of fact, the part of the function which is concave up, or the part that holds water, can be got from the part of the function that is concave down, or the part that loses water, by central symmetry in the point of inflection. So we could pick any point on this section here and reflect it through the point of inflection, and we will get a point on the other section. So for example, if we pick this point here and reflect it through, and go out the same distance on the other side, we get a point on the curve. The same is true for any point in this section. The reason that the point of inflection is the midpoint of the two turning points of a cubic function is because the derivative of a cubic function is a quadratic. If the cubic function has turning points, then the quadratic function crosses the x-axis and at the values of x, that are the values of x of the turning points. So it crosses at x equals 1 and x equals 3. And by the fact that quadratic function is symmetric, we know that 
the turning point of the quadratic function is midway between the two roots or solutions of the quadratic function. So the x value of the point of inflection is midway between the x values of the turning points. And it turns out to be the case for the y value of the point of inflection also. Uh, 